Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be going over the basic Windows commands that every beginner should learn. If you're from help desk, a sysadmin, just learning basic computer networking, or just Windows in general. So if you guys are new to the channel, please like, subscribe, and share. If you guys are coming back for some fun, let's, let's start it. So before we actually jump on my machine, you have to make sure you have a Windows machine, obviously, and you can follow along and learn some of these commands. I don't know, I have a whole list of them. I have probably about 100 you know, different commands, but we're not gonna go through every single one. We'll go through the ones that I think are good to know. So yeah, let's get into it. All right, so here we are on my desktop. So I wanna go ahead and just open up the terminal. And you can see here, I'm just like on my Windows 11 machine. And the first command I have on my list is ping. What is ping? This is pretty much a command to test network connectivity. So if we go ahead and ping, for an example, google.com, right? So now it's replying. So it's gonna send four ICMP packets, so TCP IP packets, and we got four received zero lost. What does that mean? That means we have good connectivity to Google, right? We can do IP config is another one. All right, so what is IP config? IP config is just giving you a, your IP address, your subnet mask and your default gateway. This is your router to get out to the interwebs. And if you do an IP config slash all, this is gonna give you a little more detail of your DNS suffix, your, you know, your local domain, your, if DNA, uh, DHCP is enabled, yes. Automatically configuration, yes. And this is just gonna give, some of the other uh, information like lease obtained, lease expires, and all that stuff. And I just booted up my machine, so yeah. So we're gonna, and what I just did is just do a control L to bring you and clear the screen. So let's see, oh yeah. So we can do more of the IP config. So say for an example, we can do IP config, config space slash question mark. Let's do that for a second. We have a whole bunch of options here. I'm not gonna go through every single option, but I do have a few. So we can do flush DNS. This is purchase the DNS resolver cache. So, but before we do that, we'll go ahead and display the DNS, right? So let's go ahead and just do that really quick. Let me just display DNS, right? So this is gonna go ahead and display all the DNS that this, this Windows machine has, has gotten. So now if we do a flush DNS, this is gonna go ahead and flush everything. Let's do that. Okay, it's, it's, it's. now if we display, we're not gonna get as many, right? Because, you know, these are all like this local, you know, local stuff that's associated with my Windows machine. Okay, so say for example, we want to, you know, we're having problems with, with DNS or whatever, DHCP. So we can release the IP address. So before we do it, let's just do an IP config really quick. And we have 192.168.99.6. So say for example, we can release this, right? We can release it. Now we can do an IP config again. There's no IP address, right? So now if we try to ping, it's gonna say, can't do anything because it's, we have no IP. So now let's go ahead and just IP config renew. So this is gonna pull a new IP address from DHCP. So while that does it, it's gonna give you probably the same one because this isn't a virtual machine. So we should be good there. The next command I have here is NSLOOKUP. So NSLOOKUP, let's just do NSLOOKUP. So this is gonna go ahead and look up the local DNS server. My local DNS server is my firewall, which is I have a ubiquity firewall. So I wanna exit out of there. And what I wanna do is like NSLOOKUP, uh, oh, let's go back in here. So say for example, we do google.com, let's stick with Google. We can see the resolver is 142.250.64.174, right? So, and then it has the IPv6 address here too. You can go ahead and read that off. I'm trying to see what other good stuff is here. Okay, so I also have traceroute. So traceroute gives you, you know, it can give you, let's just do it. So it's trace, sir. Say for example, let's just go to google.com again. All right, so this is gonna trace every single router to get to the end result. So it's gonna go through my router, 
my, you know, my local, it's going to go through its local gateway and my router and it go, goes out to, you know, pretty much every single hop between my local machine to google.com. This can take some, you know, this can take a while. And then the other commands here I have, I have GP update. So GP update, say for an example, you have uh, a domain environment. I want to kill this now. I don't want to go through all of that. So if I do a GP update, whoops, work, G, E, which is group policy update. This is going to update any group policies that are applied to this machine, right? So we can look at the, you know, we can look at the results of this as well. We can do a GP result, GP result, slash R. And we can look at the results of whatever group policies are applied to this machine. This machine is not on a domain, so it's just going to have its local group policies here. Okay, so it's nothing too uh, too fancy. Okay, so the next one I have here is Netstat. This will display the network connectivity or network connections, right? So Netstat, Netstat, Netstat. Okay, we can just do Netstat really quick, and then we can do some of the options. All right, so this will show you each established connection. Maybe it'll go faster if I do dash A. So what is this doing? This is gonna display all the active and listening ports. So TCP is the protocol, the IP address, which is 000 is its local. And then it's going to right here, 192.168.99.6. So nothing is really listening, too many, not too much going on on this VM, right? So there's another one I, I normally use. We can, we can uh, let's do this, dash N as well. And I'll like put it in like order here and, and all that stuff. But it's not really too much, too cra too much craziness. All right. So next one, uh, obviously I have D, uh, DC Diag, but that's going to, for more for domain controllers, this is not going to work here. So let's see, I have, okay, my 10th one here is system info. So system info is gonna generate all the system information for this machine. Obviously it's running in VirtualBox. It's a vir virtual machine. It'll show you pretty much everything. Windows 11 Pro, registered users, admin, and it'll just give you a little bit of how much memory you have eight gigs allocated to this VM and so on and so forth. The logon server, which it's itself, any IP address, the DHCP server, which is, it's a, a virtual machine, so it's getting DHCP from itself or from its uh, virtual box info, okay? Oh yeah, I wanna see, let's, let's do this really quick. And this was another interesting thing that I used to say, boot time, right? So today is the, today is the 31st, right? Yeah, so today's the 31st, and 11 o'clock, I booted this machine up. So I booted up about an hour, hour and some change ago. So I remember when I was a help desk guy, right? When I did help desk and I would say, hey, you know, Mr. User, Miss User or whatever. And can you go ahead and reboot your machine, right? And they say, okay, give me one second. And sometimes they don't want to reboot because they don't want to lose all their, their work or, you know, open all, everything up again. And they wait like 30, 40 seconds. They say, okay, it's rebooted. I rebooted, blah, blah, blah. And I would say, okay, awesome. Let me go ahead and remote onto your machine. And I would run this, this command first to see if they were telling the truth. Because sometimes it's like, okay, that was really quick. Uh, that's just a little side story. I like to throw some side stories in. All right, so another good one is like, say for example, you're a network admin and you can actually get the MAC address of your Windows machine by using get MAC. So get Mac, this will give us the Mac address of our, you know, our device. Remember, this is a, <clears throat> this is a virtual machine. So, but yeah, this is the Mac address to this virtual machine here. And let's see what else I did. The GP results slash R. So we can see the results of the group policies that are applied. Uh, that's, that's all of that. Who am I? Okay. So this is another good one. Who am I? So who am I gives me who is logged into this machine and all that good stuff. And obviously we are admin and we can do a who am I slash groups, right? 
So who is this user, you know, a part of? What what uh what user groups, what member, uh, what groups belong to admin, right? So we have all this, we have everyone, NT uh, NT authority, local, blah blah blah, administrators, users, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is good, especially like when you compromise a machine, you can see who's, you know, what groups that user is a part of. So these are some good commands to use, even on the pen testing side, because I use it. Okay. So we can also look at the UPN format. So we can do who am I UPN. Obviously, uh, we're not, a, you know, there's you, it's user principal name. So obviously I'm not logged onto a domain. So this is probably not going to. Let's see if I could do user. Okay. Let me, let, me, oh, let me bring it up. All right. So we can see here the SID, the security identifier for this user. This will give us some insight. This is sometimes good as well. Um, what other good set? So the set command is actually a really good one because it gets the system detailed as well. All right. So let me, let me just open up a regular command shell. Let's see, maybe it's just a. Uh, let me open up this. All right, so if we do set. We can see all the, all the get the system details, right? So we can see everything. Before, if you guys are going to ask, this is the terminal. So obviously, this is set variable like I. Um, I. Uh, all right, so. Let's open up the command prompt. Let's just use a command prompt instead, right? So we can, you know, you can set path. So say, for example, let's do, go ahead. What happened? I kill this machine? All right, let's do CLS. All right, so if I go ahead and do whoop, set, um, set path, we can see the path that it's set to, right? And this is a, just another command that you can use too. And let's go ahead and just do some system commands and we'll wrap it up with a few more. I don't even know how many I showed, but you could take a note of them. So if I do a DIR, which is listed directory that we're in. So or list the folders that are in the directory that we're in. That's what I meant to say. All right. So say, for example, we want to go to desktop. So we can use CD desktop. Okay. That's what I hate about the command prompt. I can't do a control L. All right. So now if I do DIR, we only see a few things because I don't have much on this, this VM. So let me keep going down. Okay. So say, for example, we want to, we don't have anything, but let's make a directory, right? We can do MK DIR. I'm just going to make it at video. Okay. Now, if I do an LO DIR, we can see at video. So if we CD at video, obviously there's nothing in there. Oops. Right, so we can we can put some stuff in there, but we're not going to do that right now. The next thing I have is system file checker. So S, uh, SFC. So you can do SFC, and it's a utility running. Okay, so say for example we do L, put a question mark. I guess we can just. All right, I know the command, so let's just do that. Let's just do SFC scan now. I guess, oh, we have to run it as an admin. I'm an idiot. I guess I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's just run this at admin. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's do SFC again. And we can see now, we can scan now for integrity. These are good if you're troubleshooting, right? So what we can do is verify only. Say, for example, we just want to verify only. Copy this. Okay, and we can verify the process will begin. This will take some time. And this will go and verify the, the system, All right? So the last one here, what we'll do is, let's just kill this. All right, the, the last thing we can do is chk dsk, hk dsk. So what is this gonna do? This is gonna do a check disk. This says make sure like all the, the files and, you know, the, the folders and disks, it checks, you know, the integrity of all the 
all the data, the metadata. So this is pretty much what this is going to go ahead and do. It's, you know, obviously there's nothing really on this machine. Let's see if there's a, all right, there's a few network commands we can run, right? So we can do route print. This is another good one. If you're looking for the routing table in Windows, so you can see, you know, here we have all our, all of our routing table, the active routes that are, you know, here, obviously there's not much fancy stuff because it's, you know, it's only a virtual machine. I don't really have much in here. So I guess the last thing we can do here is power config. So let's do POW power CFG list. Whoops, list. And we can see all the pretty much the, um, the power balance, blah, blah, blah. And I guess the last thing we can do is task list, right? We can look at all the tasks that are running and say, for example, you want to kill a task. Um, what's running that I can kill? Brave, for example, the brave.exd. So this is the PID. Let's come back up. We can see the PID, which is a processor ID. All right, so say, for example, we want to kill, uh, let's go to brave. Let's do 141436, 1436, right? So now if we come up, let's do 1436, right? All right, so let's go ahead and kill tasks, tasks, kill, right? So slash PID, which is a processor ID, and then what was it, 1436, I think? I think that was it. And then we're gonna force that, right? Was it 1436? I remember now. 1436, yeah, 1436. 1436. All right. So, yeah, let's see what else we can. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And then CLS, obviously. So, say for example, we have CLS is pretty much to clear the, clear the screen. And I guess we'll end it here. That's a lot of commands. There's a whole bunch more that I have here, like this part, RoboCopy, XCopy, delete, you know, associated file. There's so many other commands where I can be here for an hour. But I think. Overall, these are good commands to know as a beginner. And you can always, you know, ask me if you have any questions or, you know, there's a lot of commands in Windows and Linux and Mac and all these operating systems. So don't expect to know them all at one time. Just take your time learning them and use a question mark. Use these commands to learn the actual syntax behind it, not just, okay, IP config is show me the IP address. What other, you know, what other syntax that goes with it will be important for you as well. So hopefully you find this informative. Thank you so much for checking it out. And until next time, have an awesome day.